Hey, Boomer. That's what I call my 15-year-old daughter when she tells me to turn down the music. But I don't listen to music the way I used to listen to music, on audio cassettes. We all stream music now, on Spotify or YouTube or something else. But how does that work? How is there music somewhere out there, who knows where, and it gets down to my phone, and then I can listen to it live? Well, we're here to find out. How does networking work? For example, you're probably watching this video on your phone or tablet or laptop coming from somewhere on the internet in the cloud and it's displaying video and audio right there in front of you. Have you ever wondered how this all works and why does it work that way? Uh, I mean, we know it's all ones and zeros, but why is it ones and zeros and how does this all function and why does it function that way? Well, to understand this a little bit better, let's start with a story about Bill and Tom. All right, so just bear with me here. Bill and Tom, they lived in a parallel universe, similar to ours, but it was a little bit different there. And Bill and Tom, they lived in this neighborhood, also similar to ours, but they lived on the street. And they constantly were calling each other and going, hey, can I borrow some sugar? Sure. Ran across the street, grabbed some sugar. Can I borrow some milk? Yeah. Got some milk. Can I borrow some toilet paper? Can I borrow a TV? Can I borrow a couch? And they're constantly borrowing things from each other. And they said, one day they sat down and they said, look, we're doing this so much, there's gotta be a better way to do it. So they said, why don't we build a chute between our houses, and then that way when we need to borrow something, we just put it in the chute, and it'll just send it off, and boom, it's there, and we don't have to keep running across the street. It'll come in very handy, especially in bad weather. I said, that's brilliant, that's a great idea. But we have to talk to the homeowners association to make sure we can do this. So they all got together, and they said, hey, this is what we want to do. And the homeowners association said, that's a great idea. We have the same problems. We want to build this shoe too, but let's build it in a way where we can all use it. So they proposed a lot of ideas and they finally came up with this thing uh, where Mrs. Smith, she lived at the end of the street and she said, hey, my hubby, he doesn't do anything anyways. He just sits at home all day. I could just have him sit there and uh, whenever we build a shoot, we'll have all the shoots come out in, in one room and then he'll sit there when he sees a package come out of the chute, he'll take it and he'll send it to the appropriate place. Then they said, well, well, how does he know where to send it? So they came up with this thing on the head of the package, they're gonna put this uh, label that has the following information. From, to, the contents of the package, and then an ID of the package. And they wanted an ID of the package just in case, you know, Tom was sending Bill five cups of coffee and one of them had sugar in it. Well, here's five cups of coffee, which one has sugar? Package ID 117 is the one with sugar. So you can differentiate uh, uh, you know, what it was if they're all coming from the same source. So it all worked out and, and this is kind of like a, a protocol that they followed to be able to send these packages. The protocol was a couple of things. One, the package is a certain size. They chose 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches. Uh, so that they would all have the same package and the shoot size can be built the same way. Next is, they, they built a system which would automatically package whatever they were sending. So if you put in a cup of coffee, it built a box around it and scanned it and say, this is coffee, put a label, says this is coffee from Tom to Bill and give it a package ID and they would send it off. And the other thing that it would do is one, it, once it built the package, it would uh, also fill it with the rest of the empty space with foam so nothing would move around in there. It was like padding within the package. And then that padding would of course on the other end just like be sucked in and it was reusable the next time it builds a, uh, a new package. So it's a very complex system as you can imagine. But in this parallel universe, they had the ability to build that. Going forward, they finally built this system and they discovered a problem with it. Everybody was getting all of these random packages that wasn't destined for them. And they have to go, boom, package. This isn't for me. And they would send it back. So they found out when they got together, they started investigating. They found out that Hubby was actually illiterate. He couldn't even read the labels. So what he was doing is when he gets a package, he would take it and he would just send it down the next shoot. And then if it comes back, he would just send it down the next shoot. If it comes back, he sent it down the next shoot. And they were sitting there going like, well, this causes a lot of noise. It's not efficient. There's gotta be a better way. They decided it's time to make a switch. So they took out Mr. Hub and they brought in a consultant named Mr. Switch. And Mr. Switch, 
he was very, very capable of reading and understanding things, and he may even make his own table, knowing at what end of each of these shoots, who lived there, what the house number is, and all that information. So whenever he gets a package from shoot number one, and is going to, from, from Bill to Tom, and he knows Tom's Bill uh, is down shoot number five, he would just send it down shoot number five, and everything worked great, much more efficient, and cut down on a lot of the noise. So how does this all relate to computer networking? Well, let's take a look at the system that they built and how it relates. Computers, they send information in packets instead of packages. And these packets, the way they're constructed is they have information in there, they're a certain size. Um, and I know that somebody's gonna correct me on this, so I'll just say it ahead of time. Uh, there was things called cells with ATM. They were a certain fixed size. Some of them are more of a dynamic size. But just for the sake of consistency, let's just say there's the protocol. There is uh, size limitations. There's maximum transmit units. There's, there's uh, sizes of, of these packets. And at the front of the packet, there's a certain size label called a header. And that header contained the same information. It contains more information, but the important parts were from to the destination port, which is really telling you the application or what the contents is inside. And then the source port, which is really like a, just a packet ID. So these are the things to determine, to be able to separate things out and to determine where this thing is going. Uh, and they were all connected, all the computers were connected to a central place. Initially it's connected to a thing called the hub. Now a hub would just take information off one wire and send it down all the other wires, right? And across the other wire, the computer would look at this and go, this is not my address, and we just discard it. They just throw it away. And the one computer that it was destined for them, they would keep that information and they would look at it. So this caused a lot of noise, um, and this is why they had to upgrade networking from hubs to switches. And these things switches, they were more intelligent. They were able to take information off one wire, look at a table that they had, they, they had a list saying, okay, here's all the ports and here's the addresses down each port uh, who, who resides there. And they'd be able to say, this is going to this address, you know, and send it down only one wire as opposed to sending to everybody. As you can imagine, it cut down on a lot of the noise and made networking a lot more efficient and much faster. So I left out a lot of detail here on purpose just to simplify things. If you feel that I left some important detail that I should have included, or maybe there's an analogy that I missed there, please leave your comments below. Let me know as I want to make these things more and more useful. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave your comments below, definitely. And as always, thanks for watching.